Hey guys, welcome back. Now we are going to go ahead and set up our project. So you want to make sure you have Python installed on your system. So if you don't have Python, come over here, download any version of Python for your system. So over here, this is where you can find some guides and some tutorials about the Django REST framework. I want to recognize that they have a pretty good documentation for about everything that they offer. So after we go through the project, I recommend you come over here and take a look at some of these things. Obviously, we're not going to be covering all of them. But if you go through our project and then you come over here, you see that things will make sense faster. Okay, so uh, imagine you have Python installed. I'm going to come over here in my VS code. So over here, I'm going to be working on a Mac. So on Mac or Linux, you will most likely have two versions of Python. So if I came here and ran Python 3 dash dash version, you can set I have Python 3.8.5. So you want to make sure you have any version of Python 3.6 and up. So if you're on Windows, you want to run Python dash dash version, and then you should have Python version. So me, I have to put a three because I know I have more than one, but you should be able to see your Python version even on Windows. So now that we have the Python discussion out of the way, we need to create the virtual environment for our project. So right now, I'm in my desktop. So over here, we are going to create a virtual environment using the tool called virtual env. So virtual env doesn't automatically come with Python, so you're going to need to install it. Now, when you install Python, you get pip. So you can now use pip to install the virtual env by doing pip install virtual env. Now, since I have two versions of Python, I need to specify that I need to use pip3. So make sure you run that. So you should be able to get the virtual env installed. Me, I already have it installed. So now that we have it, we can use it to create a virtual environment. So to create a virtual environment, you're going to first create the folder that's going to contain our project. So here we can now say mkdir. I'm going to call this one drf to do list app. Okay. Then we are going to seed into drf to do this app. So over here, we can say virtual env and then the name of the virtual environment. So we're going to call ours venv. So I'm going to type venv there. And then when we run it and do an ls, it's going to create the venv folder. Now, whenever we create a virtual environment, we need to activate it. So if you're on Mac or Linux, you want to do source venv bin activate like this. So when we run that, you can see that now it's activated. So if, if you're on Windows, I recommend you use the git bash command line here so that you can get the bash environment. So if you don't have git bash, please install git. It will come with git bash. And over here, you can choose you can choose a default shell. So you can set yourself to, so you can set it to the git bash one that when you install git, you should be able to get. So on Windows, if you have git bash, make sure it is the one selected here. Then you can run source. Then it's going to be something like venv, scripts, then something like this, then activate. Believe like this. Then it should be able to source it in. If it doesn't, then be sure to look up online how to create a virtual environment. I have a video about it. I'm actually going to link it in the description. So if you're on Windows, you don't get any trouble. So now that we have a virtual environment, we have an isolated version of pip and Python. So here, if I did Python like this, dash dash version, remember now I'm not putting Python 3 here, but if I run this, you can see that it's using Python 3.8. So if I did which, which pip, so if I did which Python, you can see that it's using the Python in our virtual environment. Okay, so that means that now we can pretty much isolate all our project dependencies into this virtual environment. Similarly, we have pip and it is installed here. Now we can use pip to install Django. So here we can do pip install Django like this. I'm also going to install the Django REST framework. Then you should see that you can install it by doing Django REST framework like this. So now we can also add, uh, it's going to be Django, then the Django REST framework. So install those. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and install the Django REST framework and also Django. So right now we have Django 3.1 installed. Now we can use Django to create the Django project. So when we install Django, we get access to the Django admin. So we can use Django. So here we can say Django admin. Then we want to say start project. So then we can give our project name. We're going to call this one to do list API like this. Then we want it to get created in the current folder. So here we can put a dot at the end and run that. So when we run that and do an ls, you can see that now we have these other folders that are provided to us. So you see we have access to the manage.py. 
So here we can now run our project by using Python. We can say Python manage.py run server and run that. So when we run that, it sets up the local development server. We can click over here and we have the Django project here. Okay, so you see that here in the REST framework, whenever we so whenever we install the Django REST framework, we want to quickly add it in the installed app section. So we are going to open this project in VS Code. Okay, so over here I'm going to stop the server and do code dot. Or if code dot doesn't work for you, you can just go to VS Code. Then you say open folder, and then you should have your project open up. So now we have our project here. So we can go to our to do this project, then in settings.py, then we want to go to the installed section, installed section, or installed app section, and add the REST framework. I'm gonna come over here and I create the apps we are going to be working with. If you're not familiar with what apps are, they are basically a way we can group related functionalities together. And we'll do this because apps provide a very good way to reuse code. So what do I mean by this? Let's say you have an app for authentication here. You will know that most of the applications you will build will use the same kind of authentication. So either can be email, email password, the social authentication. So if we had an app here that did all those things very well, the idea of the apps is we should be able to pick it there and plug into any other Django project and it should work just fine. So here I'm going to create the two apps. So I'm going to do, so I'm going to do Python manage.py start app. So the first app is going to be called to do's because you're going to be managing to do resources, but this can be anything really. So let's run to do's. Also, let's also create an app for authentication like this. You can think of it as a fully featured module. So here in authentication, we can have, we can have everything to do with authentication. So in to do's, we can have everything to do with managing to do's. So like I said, we should be able to plug this one from this project to another project and things should work really well. So now that we have all this, I'm going to initialize a Git project so that we can now integrate with Git. And like I said, we need to be doing things like integrating the CI because these are the practices that you're going to need in order to write a successful project. I'm going to go here in the browser and go to .git ignore. So this site allows us to quickly create .git, .git ignore files for the common uh, languages and frameworks. So over here, I'm going to type in Django and then I'm going to click create. And then I should get a sample.git ignore file. So I'm going to come over here and initialize a git project by doing git init. So that's going to create a git project. Now we need to create a git ignore file so we can do touch dot git ignore. If it doesn't work, if touch doesn't work for you, you can create it through the finder, like here you say new. But if you're using git bash on Windows, you should also be fine. So let's create that. So when we do dot git ignore, we can come over here and paste all these git ignore files. So I believe our environment is being escaped. You can see that now it's highlighted. It's highlighted gray, meaning it's being escaped. Okay, so that's gonna do it for our initial setup. So in the next one, we're gonna be looking at the user model and also how to make a custom one for our application. So thanks guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you in the next section.